Hi guys and ladies, welcome back to the channel. My name is Disema Matieti. On this video, we are talking about type of companies. On this video, we're talking about an important one and very, very interesting one. It's called the Personal Liability Company, also known as INC Inc. We've seen a lot of companies at the end of our letter, as you're reading something, it will say whatever name Inc. And you ask yourself, why is it called Inc? Are they running out of Inc? But let's talk about what does it mean to have a company that ends with INC. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the differences of what does this company, what makes this type of company stand out. There are 16 different ways of that you can actually think about before this is over and above just you registering a name after picking up a name and registering a name you still have to understand what is required during the registration process what is required during annual financial returns and in this video we're going to cover all of them first part that i would like to do is to start off with a disclaimer that this video is for general uh, information only and does not constitute legal advice it is advised that you should seek your own professional advice on any consent if you have any consent please feel free to get your own professional advice let's start with the definition what is a what is this personal liability company so a personal liability company it turns out that it is a private company it is a private company operating for a profit so what does it mean? Does it mean you have to go open up a private company first? Maybe, let's keep on going. The memorandum of incorporation must state that is a personal liability company. So remember on the previous one, if you have watched the previous video, we've spoken about the memorandum of incorporation. Right here, it seems like instead of this one being a, just a private company, PTY LTD, there's something that you write there called the memorandum of incorporation has to state that this is a personal liability company. The directors and past directors are jointly and severally liable for the debts of the company. That is what makes the difference. Why is this important? If you are opening up a company or you're opening up as a practice, you are creating an NINC. Because in this case, if you are a doctor and you're giving me wrong advice, you can't just say, no, it was the company that gave you wrong advice. It wasn't me. You become personally liable for what you're telling me to do. If you come over, you told me to cut off my leg and it turns out I wasn't supposed to cut off my leg. You are becoming personally liable for um, the advice that you gave me. And that's where it comes back to say, no, you can't just stop at a private company because you are a professional. You have to convert your private company into a personal liability company so that advice that you're giving out we will come back and get you besides the doctors which are, are, are likely to have an uh, inc company it is now the lawyers or the people in the legal field that normally make use of this way because as you look at the definition of a profession you're looking at profession is doctor, medical people, people in medicine, and people in um, law for the reason that whatever they are saying to you, they are personally liable for it. It's called a profession for that case. So we'll talk about what is a profession um, later on because now we always like to be called professionals. Because, hey, I'm a professional, but we are not a medical person or we are not a lawyer. Is it still appropriate to be called professional? Yes, I'm an analyst. It's a professional. Who are you professing to? Next one is incorporation. Um, it may be incorporated by one or more people. This is uh, this type of company is mainly used by professional associations. Like I said, if you're opening up, you are a lawyer firm. You can pick this one. If you and uh, your friends are combining to create a, a, a surgery or a general practice type of a thing, you can take the INC if we all joined in together to create a good, nice company that gives out good advice, we can actually do this INC. 
Now the question is, can being an analyst be left as a PTY LTD or was it supposed to be used as an INC? The answer lies on is the nature of what I'm giving you uh, under the banner of a profession or not. If it's not in a profession, then it cannot be a, an INC. It remains a private company. Registration, you need to fill up your notice of incorporation, which is the COR 14.1. And also you have to have a memorandum of incorporation. If you cannot make your own memorandum of incorporation, your the 15.1 COR 15.1 become you know, uh, the basis that you go for. It could be anyone between A and E. The one that talks to a personal liability company is the one that you have to fill in. Or you can make up your own thing to say, I'm not the only member, the 17 of us, and this is how we're going to share the, the profits. This is how we're going to do the work also. All of that, you do it in the memorandum of incorporation. The place of business, if you're in South Africa, you have to have a registered place of business. You can't just operate without the registered place of business in the Republic of South Africa. Annual returns are supposed to be done this is where you're saying yes i am still uh, in operation and i've done so well this year you are required to file that you professing that you have done so well within 30 days after the anniversary of your incorporation financial annual financial statements also needs to be done remember like i said in the previous video there's a difference between financial returns and annual financial statements whenever we hear returns i don't know about you i always hear about you know, tax return financial money returns it's always ching ching related but in this case it is not it's a little bit different you just have to declare on the annual return how much have you done in the period and then on the annual financial statements you have to give out your profit and your losses your statement of financial position and all that fun stuff, cash flow statements, and all the fun stuff within six months of the financial year end. The financial year end cannot be changed. It has to remain fixed. As if you say it's a 12 months operating year, it remains a 12 months. I can't just decide that, oh, this year I like it so much, I'm going to make it a 15 month long year because we're waiting for some profit to come through in March. You cannot do that. If it's a 12th year, it remains a 12th year. Just like that, you cannot change it. Um, I think the most common one is a 12th year financial period. So um, if you want to see if you can change it to seven year long, you can find out by reaching out to people in the profession. Changes to the financial year. Yes, you can make changes to the financial year, but you can't just thumb suck and make your own changes. You have to go back to the CIPC and fill up a form called COR25, which and which you must also comply with all the requirements set before you are required to, to make your own changes. Is your auditor compulsory? Yes, it is compulsory. Uh, if you hold more than 5 million of another person assets or more, um, or if you, the public interest score is more than 350, or if the public uh, interest score is 100 or more and your financial, your annual financial statements are internally combined, or if the MOI, um, if it's required by the MOI or by shareholders or directors resolution in terms of the agreement. So your MOI is very, in, in, um, very important. You have to actually think twice before you create an MOI. Company secretary, is it required to have a company secretary? No, it is not compulsory. But if you want to, you're creating this law firm and you uh, can decide to say, you know what, I already have the auditor and I'm going to need the people to talk to this company secretary at all the time. So the company secretary will be the one that go out and speak to people. Is the annual general meeting required? It is not required. But if it's stated in a memorandum of incorporation, then it will be required in that way. Um, besides that, you are not required to create. Um, you are not required to create an annual general meeting. The minimum number of directors that are required only one is required. 
Um, so you can have a one man show uh, INC if you are just a doctor practicing on your own or just starting up your, your own law firm, you can make a one man or one woman show. Number of members that are required also just one. So you can be one member and one director in one go. So it's easy. You, you open it up like you open up a private company, just one one and then you, you are ready to go. The offering of securities to the public. Yes, the MOI re restricts the transfer of securities to the public. So if you are deciding that you are a doctor and you're going to be a good doctor, not the show, but the good doctor. Um, and you're going to give all of your regular patients. If you do five visits, I'm giving you shares. If you get 10 visits, I'm giving you shares. You cannot do that as long as this is a INC. It is a private company. You won't see it in the stock exchange. You won't see it with too many members or people that, that have got interest in the company. Or have got shares into the company record keeping yes you are allowed you are supposed to keep records this is why you see the doctors and the lawyers have got so much paperwork each client has to be recorded each expenses has to be recorded doesn't matter you have to keep your records this is where the cloud becomes a compelling solution to say let's just scan all this thing we bend the paper and then we store them into the cloud and then we'll blame Google or Amazon AWS if it falls away. But you have to keep the records. What is your regulatory body? The Commission of Intellectual Property and uh, Property Rights and, and Companies is your regulatory body. So CIPC will tell you what to do and what not to do. I hope you enjoyed you know, this high level of personal liability company. If you're considering to starting one and this what's on the screen right now will give you a view of what you need to know in terms of personal liability company if you like the summary please feel free to share it with your friends share it with the other colleagues while you are there ask them to come to the channel and subscribe and hit the thumbs up so that more people like yourself may know about this message and google if the sees more thumbs up and more comments saying i love what you are doing it will recommend to more other people and we can share the information so the next time when you go and want to visit south africa or you're already in the republic of south africa and you want to open up a company you would know exactly what needs to do so i just saved you hours and hours of reading the company's act by just giving you a simple snippet so guys thank you for coming in stay tuned for the next video